Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and archaeology buff. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. And each day, I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you. So let's take a look at today's stories. A quick content warning before I begin, in this episode, I'll be talking about cancer and some of its tragic impacts. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365 with MXM Tune. On this day in 2016, scientists reported that the earliest evidence of human cancer was in a 1.7 million year old fossil in Swarskons Cave, South Africa. The explosive new finding was published on July 28, 2016 in the South African Journal of Science. This discovery confirmed that the battle against cancer is far, far older than we originally thought. Let's reverse. The setting of our story is in a World Heritage Site in South Africa, in an area so rich with fossils that we call it the Cradle of Humankind. The oldest fossil of a life form that we've ever found is 3.5 billion years old and was found in, you guessed it, South Africa. Some of the earliest fossils of human ancestors were also found in South Africa and other parts of the African continent. In fact, from the fossil record, we know that humanity was born in Africa. Do you know Kendrick Lamar's song, The Black or the Berry? In the song, the Jamaican musician Assassin says, remember this, every race starts from the block. When he says the block, he's talking about Africa, where the human race began. So in this cradle of humankind, among thousands of other fossils, scientists found the fossil of a foot with evidence of a cancerous tumor in it. The foot belonged to an ancient human relative who died somewhere between 1.6 and 1.8 million years ago. Using micro-CT technology, which is basically like a very high-resolution x-ray microscope, scientists identified that the tumor was an osteosarcoma, an aggressive type of bone cancer. This discovery was monumental because many of us think of cancer as a modern malady, something caused by pollutants in the air or our food. And while science shows us that our ultra-processed world has increased the occurrence of cancer, we can see from this fossil that it's actually a very ancient disease. In fact, some scientists have pointed out that one of the main reasons we don't see a ton of historical evidence of cancer is that people just didn't live long enough to develop it. Cancer occurs mostly in people over the ages of 65 and beyond. Historically, the average human life expectancy rarely surpassed 40 years. But now that the life expectancy has extended past 65, we're now seeing more cases of cancer. In his landmark book, The Emperor of All Maladies, oncologist Siddhartha Mukherjee says, civilization did not cause cancer, but by extending human lifespans, civilization unveiled it. Tragically, in the modern world, cancer is the second most deadly type of disease after cardiovascular diseases. One in every six deaths is caused by cancer. It's a horrible, tragic disease that has probably affected all of us in some way. But the response to cancer is also awe-inspiring. We've come so far in our ability to identify, treat, and survive cancer. So what exactly is this ancient malady? Cancer is actually a category for over 100 different types of disease but they all work in a similar way. Our bodies are made up of trillions of cells that grow, divide, and multiply in the normal processes of growing, moving, healing, in short, living. As cells grow old, they die, and your body recycles or discards them. Cancer happens when suddenly the process goes wrong. Your cells start rapidly reproducing, more quickly than they should, and old cells aren't discarded. As more and more cells appear, the dead cells form a tumor that can grow large enough to block your body's healthy functioning. Tumors can be benign, meaning they won't spread to other parts of the body and disrupt the whole system, but cancerous tumors continue to spread and invade other parts of the body. Cancer is genetic in the sense that something in the genetic code of these cells has gone wrong. As we've explored in other episodes, DNA is basically an instruction manual telling our bodies how to operate, In cancerous cells, the manual that DNA gives us is somehow hijacked and starts telling cells to grow or divide at an alarming rate. These genetic changes can be caused by environmental pollutants like tobacco or UV rays, 
errors in ourselves themselves or can be passed on from parents to children. To hear about an amazing use of DNA, you can listen to our July 20th episode about the first COVID-19 vaccine trials. Now that we know our earliest ancestors had the genetic makeup for cancer as well, what scientists are drawing from this is that cancer is a moving target that can increase or fade with environmental factors. Human bodies have the potential for cancer, but it's usually environmental factors that trigger the disease. Modern medicine has done so much to develop cancer therapies, and the rate of survival is increasing. While we still have a long way to go to eliminate cancer, I'm so grateful to the scientists, researchers, and healthcare workers who have committed to the long fight. It's also never too early to be on the lookout for signs of cancer. While young people don't need to be too stressed out about it, it is important to see a doctor for an annual checkup and to stay on top of our own health. Now, let's talk about music. You know that trend where you look up the number one Billboard song on the day you were born? Well, if you were born on July 28th, 2007, your song is Hey There Delilah by the Plain White Tees. Also, happy birthday. Hey There Delilah was a smash hit for the Plain White Tees, who before its release were mostly known in the underground music scene in Chicago. Released on their third studio album, Hey There Delilah eventually went plat, receiving two Grammy nominations and it might be adapted into a TV series in the near future. The band's frontman, Tom Higginson, wrote the song about a fictitious long-distance romance. It was allegedly inspired by an American track star named Delilah DiCrescenzo, who graduated from Columbia University in New York City and who Higginson met in Chicago in 2002. They never dated, but I guess she made an impact. And now for our final segment of today's show, I'm going to be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a July 28th in my life. On July 28th, 2020, somebody sent me a Pokemon card of MXM Tune. Now, I was curious, you know, what would my stats be? What would my name be? It was MXM Tune, but the O's were zeros. And my photo was me doing a peace sign with a little caption that says, I make cool ukulele noises. I did have an issue, however, with the amount of health points that were assigned to me. Um, 30 whole health points. I was a leaf type Pokemon, which is, you know, I think correct. But I also really don't agree with the fact that my, my health points were only at 30. That's so low. I did have two skills, ukulele noises, which costed 200. And it says, make we, we'll make you cry because it sounds so freaking beautiful. And then the last one was TikTok dancer Ye Ye, which also cost 200 points in order to use. And the description was, we'll attack you with her sicko mode dance moves from TikTok Ye Ye. So, um, you know, that's me as a Pokemon if you're ever curious about what my stats would be. Thanks for going back in time with me. And remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.